certainly are glad that you're here. And uh, this morning on 4th of July weekend, um, in keeping with sort of that theme of, of freedom and our independence, uh, I'm going to begin a series this morning that I'm just calling Freedom. Freedom. And, uh, I, you know, I was impressed that Pastor Zach felt a little bit free this morning. Did you hear him sing? He sang, I think it was Lee Greenwood, but he sang. He made an attempt at it, and I've, I've sensed a little bit of freedom there this morning. <clears throat> we may need to rein that in a little bit. <clears throat> Just kidding, Zach. You keep it coming. <clears throat> I want to begin a series this morning, and over the next, <clears throat> excuse me, the next several weeks, I want to talk to you about uh, being free from some things, being free from some things in, in your life, and, and this morning I'm just going to start off be talking about something that I believe holds a lot of us down, and that's, that's our past. A lot of people can't move forward into the future God has for them because uh, we're stuck in the past or there are things in the past that have a hold of us and, um, and, and, and weigh us down and bind us more than we may even be willing to admit that they do. And there are people in this room this morning and people that we know, and, and maybe you're one of them, that some, at some point in your life, someone lied to you, someone hurt you, someone betrayed you, and, and to this day, you're still carrying around bitterness and resentment and unforgiveness and, and shackles in, 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 of sorts, if you will. And I'm excited this morning uh, about this message because I want to talk to you about breaking through some of those chains and, and some of those attachments, some of those unwanted hitchhikers, if you will, um, some of those labels even that have been attached to you because of something or someone in, in, in your past. So many of us, someone in our past called us something, said something, did something, characterized you in, in, in some way, maybe even, even yourself, and you believed a lie about yourself, you believe something that's not true about, about yourself, and you've been living under some kind of label, if you will, um, of the past. And I believe God's going to do a work this morning to, 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 to begin to break some of that off of us and to begin to break some of that off of you. So, so the title of this message this morning is this, Sticks and Stones. Sticks and Stones. Help me complete that phrase, would you? Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. In the name of Jesus, words will never harm me. Right or wrong, we label people, don't we? And right or wrong, we, we accept labels that people give us at times in our lives. I want to I just share with you um, a, a couple of, a few that you're probably familiar with, and I, I'll say the name, and you tell me the label that's been attached to that name. Some of these uh, you, you've known for years, some even centuries, because Labels are so powerful that they stick with us for, for long periods of times, many times lifetimes, many times even beyond our lifetimes. So, so help me out. Just play along with me. There was Attila the Hun, and I don't think that's the Hun that they, they refer to in Pennsylvania and Maryland when they say Hun. It's a different kind of Hun. Attila the Hun. There's Conan the... How about Billy the... Buffy the... <laughs> Winnie the Pooh. Pooh, Winnie the Pooh. I mean, <clears throat> we, we take on these labels, we, we, we give labels to people, we, we, we take on labels ourselves, and, and some of those may sound funny, may sound, may, may sound silly, but the Bible tells us that there is power in our words, that we are snared by the words of our mouths. It can affect our lives in, in greater ways than we could ever imagine. The Bible says that the power of life and death are in the tongue. And someone may have said something. Someone may have, have attached a label to you. Or maybe even you yourself, you just kind of accepted that I am this and I'm, I'm that in your life at some point, And it's become this attachment of an, an identity of sorts to yourself that has impacted you in a negative way. What negative label follows your name? 
I want you to think about this for a second. Some of you may be, be free of any of this, but for some of you, this is going to impact you. What negative label follows your name? Maybe it's something like doormat. You know what? You're just a doormat. You know, you're always so kind and you're just a push -over. People are always going to just walk all over you. And you've kind of adapted that because somebody said that about you. And that's just kind of who you've become. What about a uh, lazy one? You're just, you're, just, you're just lazy. Irresponsible one. Uh, you can't commit. You're noncommittal. How about hothead? How about hothead? How about the party girl? What about, you know, you're not good with money, so you're, you're just never going to have any, and so subsequently you haven't, um, and you don't. Um, wild one, insecure, irresponsible, you're just average. How about boring, goody two-shoes, cheater, failure, when Carson, was, uh, when Carson was just a little thing, and she's not here this morning, so I can talk about her a little bit. Um, uh, when Carson was just a little bitty thing, uh, and I've shared some of this with you before, man, Carson was, uh, she, at, at, at a very young, young age, like toddler type age, Carson, she was tough. She, she, Carson knew what she wanted at, at a very young age. She, she said, when she set her mind to something, there was no changing that mind. And she would throw herself in the floor and, and pitch a fit, as we call it in the South. Um, and, 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 and you could not, I mean, listen, spanking, we, we did all of that. And literally, from the time she was old enough to talk and she would get a spanking, she would turn around and say, that didn't hurt. I mean, tough, tough. And, 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 and people, and she's growing up in a church. She's a church baby, and we're on staff at a church. And, and people would come up to us when, when she's going through one of these little things that she, she would do, and, and she would maybe be in the floor, and we're trying to discipline her, and we're embarrassed, and we're trying to get her up and trying to get her to do what we asked her to do or something like that. And people began to say things in our presence and in her presence that we would hear and that she would hear, and they would say things, and they would use words like this. Um, boy, look at the temper on that one. You sure she's not a redhead? No offense to redheads, but you know, there again, there's a label that redheads take on as being these hot-tempered um, you know, people, individuals. They would say, whoo, defiant one, is she? Defiant, rebel, boy, is she a rebellious one. And they would begin to say these things and, and use these terms. And, and, and finally, eventually, Polly and I, you know, we're young parents and we're doing the best that we can. And, and we've got Noah over here, who is this, this sweet little child who, who uh, you know, next to never did anything wrong. And you could look at, just give him a look and he'd be like, I'm sorry. You know, and total opposites, and we've raised both of our children exactly the same way. And so Polly and I, you know, we talked about it, and we're like, look, man, we're, we're not doing anything different with Carson than we did with Noah. And, and, and look, we believe that God created this child. In her DNA, he has placed this personality. And so you know what? We're not going to own these labels that we're hearing people give her. We're not going to use those words around her. Matter of fact, we're going to tell other people, don't call my daughter defiant and rebellious. Listen, my daughter is passionate. She's passionate. You know, she, she is determined she, she has a strong will, yes. But here's what we believed about our daughter, and we began to, to use those kinds of words with her because we believe that there's power, of, the power of life and death is in the tongue. And we did not want our daughter to grow up to be a rebellious child and a, and a child who thinks that she is defiant and that's okay and, and all of these things. And so discipline, yes, we corrected her and we disciplined, but at the same time, there was this personality that we did not want her to uh, attach to certain words and, and that they were going to describe her and become her identity. And so we began to say, you know, she's passionate. And we began to speak over her. You know what, Carson? You were so passionate. Listen, the way you just acted in church, that's not okay. That's not acceptable. But you were so passionate. You're so passionate and you're so determined. And God is going to use that for his purpose and for his glory one day. 
Because there's going to come a day, Carson, when it is going to take someone who is very confident and bold in who they are to be able to stand in God's will and stand and be used for his glory and for his purposes. And it's going to take someone with your passion and your determination and your strong will to accomplish the purposes he has for your life. And we just began to speak life and turn that thing around because there is power, the power of life and death in the tongue. Now, I want you to think for a minute about the label in your life and look through the lens of God's word this morning. And here's what I pray you'll see. I pray that you will see this morning that God's power is so much bigger than your past that his truth trumps all other opinions about you. That some some people here today, some of you you have, have accepted and sort of taken on what someone said about you, a label, maybe even you've just kind of labeled yourself as something, and it is holding you back. And you can leave here today with a new God centered view of yourself. Paul said this in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. He said, anyone who belongs in Christ, that's anyone, that's you, that's me, that's regardless of your past, that's regardless of how long you were in that lifestyle, that's regardless of what you did yesterday, last night, or this morning. He said, anyone who belongs to Christ, that means you have, you have repented of your sins, you have asked Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior, you've submitted your life to him. Anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. That means if you're in Christ, all of the old is done away with. It's gone. The power of sin that that held you back, the words, the labels that held you back can be broken in Jesus' name. All of the past washed away, and the newness of life in Christ is available to you. So three truths this morning that I want you to see this morning and that will help free you this morning, some of you today. First one is this. God wants to give you a new name. Everybody say new name. New name. name. God wants to give you a new name. I remember growing up when I, when I was young, excuse me, when I was young, um, I wished that I had a different name. I wish that I had a different name. Um, My name is Robert Torrey Heron and my parents uh, gave me my father's name, Robert, and, and, but they always called me by my middle name, Tori. So in school, anybody that, gets, that goes by your middle name, you know what that's like. Every day when they call roll, Robert, Robert Heron, remember when they used to call roll in school, Robert Heron, and I'd be like, it's Tori. It's Tor-. Anyway, I used to wish I had a different name. I actually used to wish that my parents had named me Rocky. Don't ask me why. <laughs> But I wanted to be Rocky, and I used to, for the longest time, I went, man, that's the coolest name. I wish I was Rocky. Um, But anyway, wish I had a a, a new name. God wants to give you a new name. He said in Isaiah 62, you will be called a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. Some of you remember, some of you know this to be true. Remember when, um, when, a, when a girl is crushing on a guy, or, or maybe they're even, even dating, um, girls would do this thing, and, and maybe some of you have done this, um, girls would do this thing where they would write their name and, and the boy's name, the boy's last name. So they would write like Polly Heron when, when, they're, when they have a crush on a guy, and, and they would put little hearts around it and X's and O's all over it just to see what it would look like. Um, Polly did that this week. I saw it on the counter. It said Polly had hearts and X and O's. Um, maybe some of you know what I'm talking about. Um, they would do this, and, and, and we see this happen in, in the Bible so many times, so often, numerous times, where God would give someone a new name. You remember reading through Scripture, and God would say, this was your name, now it's this. This is your name, but I'm calling you this. For instance, some of those you may be familiar, familiar with, um, Abram and Sarai. Abram and Sarai. Remember Abram they, and Sarai couldn't have children, and they were getting way up there in years, and then God gave them a promise, and he said, I'm going to make you the father and the mother of many nations. You won't even be able to count your ancestors. And he said, and I'm giving you a new name from this day forward. It will be Abraham and Sarah. Jacob, 
Jacob, remember Jacob. Jacob, his name meant swindler and, and trickster. And God said, I've got a, a different plan for your life. And he gave him a new name. He said, I'm, now your name will be Israel, which means to have wrestled with God or, or God will prevail. In Judges chapter 6, remember the guy named Gideon? Gideon who was hiding from his enemies and, 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 and he's kind of taken on this, this label as a coward. And the angel of the Lord appears to Gideon and he calls him mighty man of valor or warrior. God calls you a warrior. And Gideon went on to do mighty works for God because God gave him a new name. And God will give you a new name this morning. What you've been labeled by in the past will no longer be true. I was, talking with, I was talking with a friend just recently, and this friend was going, is going through some, uh, was going, has been going through a difficult time. And I just felt prompted by, prompted by the Lord to say to this man, and, and, and <clears throat> in this conversation, I said, listen, you are a good father. You're a good father. And, and tears just began to, to stream down his face. He said, I don't, I don't feel like I've been a good father. And I said, listen, you are a good father. And I began to, to just name the reasons why he is a good father. And he has been a good father. And as I began to do that, you could see his countenance just begin to change. Because someone was telling him, yes, you are a good father. Yes, you have been a good father. For years, early on in ministry, I struggled with the title pastor. When Polly and I first went in, into ministry, we were young. We were 24, 24 years old, and, and uh, we, 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 we were hired by a, a, a little small church, a tiny church in Maryland as the youth pastors at that church. And, and people would come up to me, and, and they, would say, they, would say, they would say, well, hey, Tori. And, and some would say, well, hey, Pastor, and hey, Pastor Tori. And, and every time somebody would say, hey, Pastor Tori, um, I, I would say, oh, it's just Tori. It's just Tory. Or someone would say, hey, what do we call you? What do you call you, Pastor Tory or Bishop? Or, you know, what do you, I mean, it's just Tory. And my pastor that hired us overheard me say this to, to, to a church member one time to, to, to say, oh, it's just Tory. It's just, it's just Tory. And he heard me say this, and he called me into his office that week, and he said, Tory, he said, listen, I, I've heard you say this several times that, hey, no, it's just Tory. He said, listen, God gave you that title. He said, God has called you. God has called you for a reason and for a purpose. He said, don't shy away from that purpose. He said, you may not be comfortable with it now, but you're going to grow into that title. Don't be ashamed of what God has called you to and what God has, God has literally called you and given you. Some of you, God has a new name for you. For some of you, it's going to be forgiven. Because some of you have struggled with, 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 with feeling forgiven because you did or you, you were and you just feel like this guilt and shame is still there and it still hovers. And God wants you to know this morning that, that you are forgiven. And some of you, that's going to be the new name. It's just going to be a release and a relief that, you know what, I'm, I'm forgiven. Thank God I'm forgiven. For some of you, it's going to be transformed. For some of you, it's going to be the name, he, I am healed. For some of you, it's going to be, I am an overcomer. Some of you, it's going to be loved. I, I truly am loved. Some of you, it's going to be spiritual leader because you've always felt like, I, I'm not worthy to, to lead my family spiritually. And God is going to put in you the desire and the ability to lead your family in the ways of the Lord. For some of you, it's going to be great mom because you don't feel like you're a good mom and you don't feel like you're a worthy mom. For some of you, it's just going to be valuable because you have felt worthless, but God has a new name for you today. Many of you, you've been labeled by things in the past, and it's time to stop believing what others have said about you and believe that you are who God says you are this morning, and he will give you a good name. He'll give you a, a new name. Secondly, he'll give you a new purpose. There's a guy in the Bible that we're all familiar with. I preach about this guy a lot. His name was Simon. And some of the labels that Simon probably picked up along the way were probably like uneducated. Uneducated or dirty fisherman. Unstable, hothead, unpredictable. 
And Jesus comes along and he says, you know what, Simon, um, you're a fisherman, but I'm going to give you uh, a new purpose and you're going to be a fisher of what? A fisher of men. In other words, you're going to be a world changer, Simon. Simon, this is who you were. This was your name, but I'm going to give you a new name, and with that new name is going to come a new purpose. You're going to be a world changer. You're going to be an evangelist. I'm going to give you this purpose, and you're going to do things that you never thought you could do, and along with this new purpose came a new name, and it gave him a new identity. And this one time, Jesus asked him, he said, Simon, who do people say that I am? Remember this story? He said, Simon, who do people say that I am? And Peter, or Simon said, well, some say you're this, and some say you're that. Some say you're, you're, you're Elijah. Some say that you're John the Baptist. And Jesus looked at Simon, and he said, but who do you say that I am? And Simon said, I say that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus replied to him in Matthew 16, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter. Peter means rock. You are no longer unpredictable, Peter. You are the rock. And on this rock, I will build my church in the gates of Hades will not overcome it. He said, I'm giving you a new name. With your new name comes a new purpose, and you are the rock, Peter, that I will build my church upon. And some of you know this story. Those of you that do, I ask you this, was, was Peter always a rock after that moment? No, he wasn't. Peter messed up again and again and again, and he failed Jesus. He was growing into this new name. He was growing into this new purpose, and you will grow into your new name, your new identity, your new purpose. Peter, even, even after he failed, listen, he denied Jesus three times, Denied him three times, and then at Pentecost, even after failing miserably at Pentecost, God used him mightily to preach a sermon in which over 3,000 people were saved, and 3,000 people accepted Jesus. And then at the end of his life, at the end of Peter's life, um, he, he, they were going to crucify him and martyr him. Years and years later, he said, no, I'm not even worthy to be crucified as my Lord. He said, crucify me upside down. Now, listen, Peter wasn't born a rock, but he died a rock because Jesus had changed him and transformed him and did away with the old label and did away with the old Peter and said, this is who I say you are. And he gave him a new name. And with that new name came a new purpose. And this is the best news of all this morning. Out of your greatest weakness of your past, God can raise up the greatest strength that he can use in your future. Maybe you're an addict, maybe you've been an addict, and God will use you to help others overcome their addictions. Maybe you've struggled with marriage for years, and you've fought and fought to keep it together, and God will bring healing to that marriage, and he will use you to tell others that there's hope if you'll just hold on a little bit longer, if you'll just keep working, if you'll just keep giving it to God, if you'll just keep praying, if you'll just keep on. There's light at the end of the tunnel. God will use you. Some of you that, that have been no good with money, but it's your desire that to, to be out of debt, God's going to help you to get out of debt and to help others to get out of debt and live debt-free and use money for his glory. Listen, don't let the labels of the past define you. You are not who others have said you are, and you're not the result of your past. God will give you a new name and a new purpose. And lastly, God will give you a new future. I know so many people who are discouraged about the future. Oh, this world is, oh, oh this country, oh. my life is never going anywhere. I'm never going to be this, I'm never going to be that, I'm never going to be happy, always going to be alone. I'm always going to be miserable. I'm never going to get out of debt. I'm always going to battle with this depression. I'm always going to battle with this addiction. Listen to what God has to say. God said, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and 
a future. Listen, maybe you have taken on some labels in life. Always a bridesmaid and never the bride. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm never going to find a good man because they're all taken or they're, they're all jerks. I, I, I've failed at marriage. I'll never be able to have a, a good marriage. I've always had a bad marriage. I'm in, in inadequate mom. I'll never measure, measure up. Listen, out of your weakness, out of the label of your past, God will raise up your greatest strength to be used for his future that he has planned for you. One of the best stories I believe in the entire Bible. A lady who was named, who was labeled one of the worst labels that you could ever have, one of the worst labels imaginable. Rahab the prostitute, Rahab the, the harlot. Her name's mentioned eight times in the Bible, and six of those eight times it's attached to that label of prostitute or harlot. Why, why would God even, you know, include that in his holy scripture? You know why? Because he wants to show us something. He wants to show us something about the past and what he can do with the past and about a future that he can give us when he gives us a new name. There were two kinds of, of prostitutes in Rahab's day. There were, the, there were the, the temple prostitutes, and believe it or not, there was almost like a hierarchy, and the, there were some that were kind of, it was almost kind of respectable, somewhat more. The temple prostitutes, and then there were those prostitutes that would have been arrested on cops, and, and, and she was one of those. And you can imagine the labels and the, the words and things that were said and how she must have felt. And the emotions she must have had, I'm no good. I'm used goods. I'll never be any good. I'll never be loved. I'll never know the true love of a man. No man will ever want me. I'll never have a family. You can just imagine how how she must have felt. But the Bible says, and the Bible shows us that she started to hear about the God of Israel. She started to hear about the God of Israel, and there's a beautiful verse that just kind of lets us know that her heart melted as she heard the stories about this God. And in fact, some of you today, maybe you're watching online or maybe you're here today, maybe that's kind of what may even happen to you today. Maybe, maybe you don't really know this God that we're talking about. Maybe you believe that he exists, but as we begin to talk about the goodness of our God and the power of our God to change our lives, that your heart just begins to melt a little bit today to say, well, maybe he could be my God too. And this is where Rahab found herself. Her her heart begins to to lean towards this God. And you know what she did? The Bible says that she risked her life to hide these two spies for Israel. She risked her life. Why? Because deep down inside, she was hoping that their God might be her God. She was hoping that maybe their God that she had begun to hear about, maybe this God might have a little bit of love, might have a little bit of something for her he might could become her God as well. The story goes on and it basically tells us that she not only became the savior of those two spies, saving their lives by hiding them out, but but ultimately saving all of these other people that were around her, foreshadowing what would come years later out of Rahab the prostitute. Because you see, uh, uh, what she did was, she, uh, she, she got to know this God, and she became a new person. And all of this is not spelled out for us in the scripture, but I'm convinced in, that in whatever way, in some way, God gave Rahab a new name, and she knew it. Somehow through this process, through the people of God, she, God gave her a new name and she knew it and her life was transformed and she was forgiven. And with her name came, guess what? A new purpose. And with that purpose came a new future. And God did in her life what only God could do. Rahab married a God-fearing man named Salmon and had a great marriage with this man. And when nobody else would have thought it was possible, 
Rahab had a son, and Rahab had a grandson, and a great-grandson, and a great-grandson, and a great-grandson, and a great-grandson, and a fifth great-grandson whose name happened to be Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God, and Rahab the prostitute will forever be known throughout history as the great-great-great-great-great-grandmother of Jesus Christ redeeming her life, redeeming the labels of the past and saying, oh, no, 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 it doesn't matter what your past, it doesn't matter what label you've been given, it doesn't matter what you've thought about yourself and how you've even labeled yourself. I have a new life. Those who are in Christ Jesus, the old life is gone, the new life is here. And that can be you today. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new person. The old life is gone. Behold, your new life has begun. You know what it requires? Listen to the words of Paul. Paul said this, forgetting what is behind, forgetting what is behind, and straining toward what is ahead, I press on. I press on. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Can I just say this to you this morning? That which held you back in the past today as we celebrate Independence Day here in in this country over the next several days, today, this day, July the 2nd, 2023, I declare the past that has held you back, I declare broken in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Listen. Listen, it's not that that I have any power, there's any power. It's, It's the power of Christ that sets us free. I want to ask you to do something this morning. Listen, if you're here today, the band's going to join me on the stage. And if you're here today and you say, you know what, Pastor? I want to be set free. It doesn't matter what it's from. It could be an addiction. It could be a mindset. It could be some type of emotional stronghold that's, that comes on you and that has held you, has oppressed you or depressed you or, or uh, just impacts your life in some negative way. And you want to be free this morning, whatever it is, in Jesus' name, I declare it broken today in Jesus' name. If you will claim it and agree with me together, let's do it. I want to ask you and invite you this morning, if you say, Pastor, I want to be set free. Whatever it is, we don't need to know. Whatever it is, would you just stand to your feet today? In Jesus' name, I want to be free. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, all of you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so proud of you guys. Listen, if if we can't be honest here, I don't know where we can be. Thank you, Jesus. Church family, I'm going to ask the rest of you, if you you would to stand. We're just going to pray. We're just going to pray. Listen, how many of you believe in the power of Christ to set us free? You know why I believe it? You know I believe it? He set me free. You know I believe it? Because he paid, he paid such a price for our freedom. How how dare we cheapen the price that he paid by not having the faith to believe that he can? After all that he paid, all that he did, You better believe it. You can overcome this and be free today. Would you help me pray for those that stood today, that boldly stood today and are are claiming freedom in Jesus' name today? Listen, if you're standing nearby to one of those that stood a moment ago, would would you just do this? Would you just 
Would you just politely reach your hand over on their shoulder and we're just to let them know, hey, I'm with you. I'm praying with you. I got your back. I'm believing with you today. Can we just pray for them? Back here, back here in the back. If someone could come back here in the back to, to these. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Church, can we pray and agree together for freedom? Thank you, Jesus. Father, we love you. In the name of Jesus, we come. Lord, you've seen the honesty, the transparency, Lord. You know the hearts of each of these here today that, have, that are crying out to you saying, Lord, I need your help. I want to be free today. I want you to just think of, think of what it is and just name it today. Whatever it is you need freedom from, name it. Tell the Lord today. And in Jesus' name, claim your freedom. Claim it right now in Jesus' name. I claim, I declare my freedom from, and you name it. In Jesus' name, Lord, we love you so much today. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your presence, Lord Jesus, that is here. Holy Spirit, do the work in our lives that transforms us today. Break off the names. Break off the labels, Lord. Break off the stigmatism. Break off the addictions and the chains, Lord. Whatever binds us today, Lord, set us free, we ask you. In the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. God, that we can be free to serve you, that we can be free to love you, that we can be free to love others, that we can be free to accomplish your work and your will in our lives, Lord. Set us free now. Lord, we ask it in the mighty name of Jesus. Do your healing work. God, I pray for wounds and hurts and scars today that they be healed in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, do the work that only you can do. Lord, I pray for restoration today. God, I pray that days and months and years be restored today. Thank you, Father. Thank you for what you're doing right now. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, we lay it down today. We leave it here, and we will not pick it back up. We thank you for it, God. Thank you for taking it. Thank you for taking it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We thank you for a new name today. God, we thank you for a new purpose today. We thank you for a new future today. We thank you for hope. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Bless your name, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Now, can we just worship him together? Would you lift your voice one more time? Can we worship him? Can we just let him know how much he means to us? Would you sing along with us?
you believe that those words are true, just give him praise in this house of worship this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Man, thank you, Pastor Tori, for that message this morning. Can I just say that Jesus is a God of invitations. And every single day, he is inviting us into that relationship with him. In church, it is in the presence of our Lord that the sins, the failures, the flaws, the heartache, those things do not get to enter into his presence with us. So please understand that that invitation is for us every day, every moment, no matter where we go, in unlikely places, the love of Jesus, the presence of God, his Holy Spirit that we felt in this room today can be experienced anywhere if we call on his name. Amen. All right, guys, we got some desserts out there. Get out there. You got 10 minutes to secure the bag. All right. Have a blessed week.